issue from May, June 1990. We got Super C on the front. This is a very, um, I wish this was a clearer shot because there's some glare in this photo and it's bothering me. And I know the robot it's supposed to be. It's the one that climbs like a crab and you gotta jump on top of him and shoot him. It's good. Man, I love Contra. I wish I didn't kill my hands so much. Anyway, what's this? Let's see. Oh my god, do I actually have it angled really well? Fuck yeah, we're gonna see this whole page just fine. <laughs> hey, it's twice the power and now it's every month. So that's what I look like right now. Just pure joy and excitement because I'm reading Nintendo Power. Thank you Hexagrax for gifting a sub to Photon Earth. Thank you so much. Holy shit, Joey Redballs. Well, I hope you're okay. I wish you well on your journey to recovery. If anyone can recover, I feel like it's you. You seem to have gone through a lot of shit, so... I think you'll be okay, but I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you, Megadam. How old am I? I'm 33. Isn't that nuts? Okay, so over here it says, Introducing Nintendo's new Mega Power Package, 12 issues a year. Okay, so you could do... Six issues or twelve issues. They give you they give you a little option, so that's great. Alright, so what are we getting into today? We're getting some Final Fantasy, some Super C, Dino Wars, Codename Viper, Barai Fighter. Okay, I was like, wait, that's not Barai Fighter. I don't know what Barai Fighter is, but I know that's Dino Wars. Okay. I was confused. I thought they were, like, going straight to what picture is what. Thank you, New Wave. Alright, so then, some special features, the Nestor Wars. I feel like every, <laughs> um, every, uh, issue I've gone through with you guys, it's always around the Nestor Wars. They're either talking about voting for it, or it's the actual Nestor Wars. So we'll see how that goes. So we got some new games, Game Boy, Strategy Guide update. Alright, what's over here? What's over here? So we get to preview of Ninja Gaiden 2. Now, okay, out of the three Ninja Gaiden games on NES, I feel like I like Ninja Gaiden 2 the least because I don't like the shadowy thing. I don't know. I gotta give it another shot, but <clears throat> I don't think so. Star Tropics. Everyone loves Star Tropics. I don't know shit about Star Tropics. Golgo 13, don't know, and Crystallis or Crystallis. Is it Crystallis or Crystallis? I say Crystallis, but I believe it is Crystallis, so. Alright, so there's a lot to get into. Thank you so much, uh, Sky Coaster Man for the raid. Thank you so much. I hope you had a very nice stream. I know Mike was in your stream. Um, you were playing AVGN Adventures, right? Anyway, so if you guys are just joining, I am going through this issue of Nintendo Power. It looks like a real good one, so I'm excited. Happy 24th birthday. <laughs> I wish it was my 24th birthday, but thank you very much. Alright, so let's see. Let me get my mouse out of the way. It's a problem. There we go. Do you guys want me to read the mailbox? We'll see. We'll see if there's one that I'll glance, and then I might read one that seems kind of good. Oh, this looks interesting. Okay, so this first one says, I, ha I have had my Nintendo for about two years now, and I have eight games. I heard on the six o'clock news it only takes four to five dollars to make a game. Why are they about forty to fifty at stores? Well, Billy, you're about to learn about the world of um, uh, cost and consumerism and how people make money. So let's see if Nintendo Power gives little Billy here his first uh, his first lesson on economics and capitalism. Thank you, Barry Swine. So this is what they say. Game packs are like human brains. 
They process information. In fact, the entire human body isn't worth much. With inflation and all, its components are worth just about as much as game pack components are, but most of us like to believe we're worth more than that. Like human brains, it's how we use the game pack's memory capacity that counts, and once our engineers put their gray matter to work, designing and developing a game, wait, developing a program to beat, to best use the game pack memory is the big, biggest challenge and expense. Add to the cost of programming and development other expenses like packaging and shipping, and you can see that the actual cost of putting a game pack on a store shelf is much more than, than that of its raw materials alone. Exactly. That was a pretty good uh, explanation, you know, for like... Um, I assume he's a kid. He might be 45, who the fuck knows. <laughs> Thank you Dylan98 for subscribing, I really appreciate that. Have I ever sent an email to Nintendo Power or another magazine? Well, I was um, subscribed during the N64 era, and no, I never did. Um, the most I did, I sent in a, a... It was like you send in a money thing for, like, a shirt, and I got an N64... I mean, a Mario 64 shirt. I can show you guys that, but... That's all I sent in for on Nintendo Power. But, um... I did write in to various... <laughs> I wrote into various music magazines, and sometimes they would print my opinion, and I felt really fucking cool. <laughs> Thank you, Phantom Gear. Hey, Secret Boss. Alright, so that was that was a good one. Okay, um... Then someone's just like, what do I do if I change my address? It's like, I don't know. There's probably a form you fill out in every magazine. Thank you, Mega Dan. Hey, Classic G. <sighs> okay, let's see. So this guy's just like stoked on the Game Boy. I don't know. It's probably not too interesting. Um, video spotlight. This kid has his picture. Let's zoom in. Can I zoom in? Nope. The wrong thingamajig. <laughs> I can't do that. Ah. Oh. There he is. So this guy, what does he have to say? Oh my god, the glare. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out. <laughs> this is great. This entertaining as fuck. I don't know. I think it's. I think it's comfy despite the awkward. Zoom ins and zooms out. Thank you so much, Pixelated Gamer, for gifting a sub to Rogue Zulo. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And hey, what's up? Nerd Rage Renegades have just raided me with some people. Thank you so much. So, welcome. We are going through this issue of Nintendo Power. Very excited. It's from 1991. It's your birthday, too. Happy birthday, Voluntara. Happy November 10th, people in here. Alright, so. This guy, he, he has an offer to make. I hear that you're looking for power players. Well, you just found your man. I'm 14 and I have 37 games. I got my Nintendo when I was 11 and I think it's totally awesome. I've played many games and beaten most of them. Blaster Master, Ninja Gaiden, Legend of Zelda, and Akari Warriors are a few that I've beaten. My favorite game is Blaster Master because I like the idea of having the little character get out, get out of the car to obtain weapons and to destroy the mutants at the end. I have other interests. I enjoy playing basketball and football. I make the B honor roll easily in school and I like to read C.S. Lewis books. <laughs> now he's just talking about himself. My favorites are the seven Chronicles of Narnia. Right now I'm trying to finish Cobra Triangle and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In the future, I plan to get Batman, Blades of Steel, and Robocop. Keep those awesome games coming, because I'm ready! So his name is Azif Mirza from Surin, New Jersey. I wonder if he's still a power player. I hope so. This kid is dedicated and awesome, you know? Hey, Fraser, thank you. This dude is a fucking pimp, says Chili Cheese Dog, right? 
Like, this guy is just pure fucking confidence. He knows that he's awesome. See, I need to, like, channel this guy's energy. Because he's just, like, straight out the bat. He's like, boom, I'm a power player. Boom, check out all this shit I've done. Boom, I'm planning on getting more and destroying those too. So, that guy's cool. Oh, and then this is another dude who thinks he's a power player. I mean, by pictures alone, this guy has way more confidence. This guy's just kind of like, I don't know, here's a school picture. But let's see what he has to say. I think I'm a power player because I've beaten just about every game that I've played. Prove it! Prove it! Just kidding. <laughs> Altogether, I've defeated 19 Nintendo games. My game pack library is small, so half of the games I defeated were borrowed from friends. Since I'm often busy from schoolwork, I cannot beat games quickly. Nevertheless, if I'm persistent enough, I can beat even the most time-consuming games. That's right. See? People go, damn Aaron, it's taking you a long time to beat Castlevania 3, but guess what? I fucking do it, and this kid gets it. Alright, I like this guy. <laughs> the Adventure of Link and Metal Gear. So he beat those, that's good. The game that puzzled me the most of all the games I've defeated was Rambo. I finally solved it without any help and destroyed the flying fortress using only five life bottles. I enjoy a variety of sports, collect basketball car I'm sorry, baseball cards, and play in the Woodbridge Middle School brand. I'm the oldest and only boy in my family and I have three younger sisters. I think the Nintendo games are getting better every year, and the Nintendo Power is the best video game magazine around. Thank you, Will from Illinois. <sighs> oh my god, there's another one? Everyone was so cocky. Damn. Aaron judges. <laughs> Classic G says he says he beats it, but his sister plays it and beats them. Yeah, you don't know if these guys are lying or not. They could all be full of shit. You know, most people are full of shit, but maybe these guys are true. Alright, here's another one. Um, so these were the guys that tried and didn't make it, but this guy... He got the spotlight, so let's see if he's like, let's see if he, I don't know if he can beat this dude. This dude seems pretty ballsy, so we'll have to see. Where's Will's YouTube channel? My god, I hope, I wish one of these dudes had a YouTube channel. That'd be great. Anyway, his favorite games, he's like, I like role-playing games because they challenge me. I can finish most games in less than three days, but RPGs sometimes take me up to a month. Ultimo is really challenging, but my favorite game is Dragon Warrior. I played lots of Super Mario Bros. 3 before the NES version came out on the PlayChoice coin-operated machine. He's cool. Flying as Raccoon Mario is tricky. Accomplishments. I've been in so many games that I can't list them all. But a few are Dragon Warrior, Ultima, The Adventure Link, Mega Man 2, Strider, and Faxanadu. When a local toy store had a Super Mario Bros. challenge, I ended up winning. Each person got to play for 5 minutes, and my high score was 38,900,000. ,000. I said that number weird, just let, let it slide. <laughs> What's really great is that I received a Game Boy for winning, so I also bought Super Mario Land. Future games I plan to get. Any RPGs that look cool, and I plan to stock up on games for my Game Boy. I'm also looking forward to Super Mario Bros. 3, Zelda 3, and Dragon Warrior 2 if they're coming out. I Let's see, interest. B playing video games and skiing at nearby Mission Ridge. To play for to pay for video games and skiing, I usually work summers at a cherry farm. Aw, that's adorable. He works at a cherry farm. He's picking cherries so he can get his games. That's cute. Advice to anybody who doesn't have a Game Boy, I say get one. It's great. You'll love it, especially on long trips. Well, thank you, um, Tom from East Wenatchee, Washington. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. Can I zoom out more? There we go. That's better. Thank you, Games and Movies, for subscribing for 16 whole months. Thank you very much. You're saying that guy didn't look 17? 
He looks 12. He looks young. I don't know, maybe that's an old picture. You know, they weren't snapping selfies every day. Like they do now. Joey Redball says, I want to read about how a kid has no friends and pleads with Nintendo Power to be his pen pal. See, that would be good, and I'm sure one exists. In one of these issues, they must, they must have printed one. <sighs> okay, so this is Final Fantasy. Woo! And I'm yawning, and I'm sorry. Um, okay, so I have yet to play Final Fantasy. I know I should. I always put it off because my first experience with Final Fantasy, I was at my friend's neighbor's house. I was watching her brother play it and I just could not get into it. But I mean, I was like, you know, I was like 10, probably 8, 8, 10. So I'm like, okay, now Aaron can maybe give it an actual try. I don't know why I'm talking about myself in the third person. But anyway, so this is about Final Fantasy 1. Welcome to a world where fantasies become a living reality. Ooh. Thank you, Yoshi, for the host. Okay, so let's see what it says. The story view takes the light warriors on a final fantasy of discovery and adventure. If you find the hidden clues here and in the game, then enter the final fantasy treasure quest. You could be whisked away on a real life adventure just as exciting as final fantasy itself. And you don't have to be a whiz to win. An 84-page Explorer's Handbook is included with the game. Learn even more treasure quest clues and strategies for later stages in the July and September issues of Nintendo Power. See? They're like, you're gonna need us if you buy this game! Alright. Let's see. Let's see. The Light Warriors. You guys see that okay? Yeah, you can, you can see it. The great sage, Lucan, predicted that four courageous foes of evil would one day recover the four good orbs and bring freedom to the world. They would be great fighters and wield the power of magic. But many years passed, then finally, beyond hope, they arrived! The Light Warriors! And I'm guessing that's them. Cool. Let's see, King's Quest, not the game, but, you know, the quest of the king in Final Fantasy. Uh, Maximum5 says, Final Fantasy was really good, but Dragon Warrior was better, you should play both. Yeah, um, I don't even think about Dragon Warrior. I always forget that exists, but, um, yeah, I'll play, um, I forget which one I was gonna play. I don't think it was the first one. I think it was like Final Fantasy 2 or maybe one of the ones on Super Nintendo. I don't remember. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I will do it. I don't know if I'll do it on stream, but I'll do it. Um, let's see. For many years, Conceria, probably say, wait, no, no, Canaria, Canaria? Canaria has suffered the ravages of an evil sorcerer. Seeking out the king of the land, the light warriors learned that the princess was abducted by Garland and taken to his castle. That's always the problem, isn't it? The princesses are always captured and taken to some asshole's castle that isn't their castle. It's a whole problem. They set forth to rescue her. Alright, so this just kind of tells you the story, the background. That's good. Through treacherous lands, the heroes fight their way through the northwest until they reach a desolate palace. Inside, they find Garland and challenge him to battle. Is this the battle? Ooh. Uh, having gained strength and experience on their journey, they defeat the wizard and rescue Princess Sarah. Nice. Hey, White Cats. Thank you. This is a lot of Final Fantasy. See, when they do um, features like this on games I'm not super familiar with, it's like, do you guys want me to, to go over it? Are you guys interested in this? Or do you want me to go on to the next section? Thank you, Hexer Rex. It's your birthday, so you can go ahead and say Princess Erin. Can you imagine if I started referring to myself in the third person 
and saying Princess Aaron, people would be like, what the fuck is this bitch's problem? You like the artwork? You guys are interested? Okay. Pixel Champion says, yes, interested. So I will... I will do it. Call yourself Castlevania Queen? Castlevania Queen doesn't know about Final Fantasy. <laughs> okay. Right. Cross the bridge awaits a new land. That's interesting spacing right here, isn't it? The fuck? Proofread. Edit. God, Nintendo Power. I guess that plays into their super sweet, like, we're cool and don't care attitude. Um, do I stream NES games from the ABS? I used to. Before I moved, I, I used the ABS a lot because I only had, um, the only way I could, you know, play actual NES cards was through HDMI. So I use the hell out of my ABS. I don't really use it that much anymore because now I use an actual NES top loader. But yeah, I used to. So like the first year and a half, um, I would stream and record footage for videos from the ABS. And it worked out fine. I liked it. Princess Erin of Castle Asshole. <laughs> You just ordered one? Well, that's cool. Yeah, I, I like mine. I think it's a good um, alternative. I was. I was born in 1987. Okay, so... Let's, does a top loader work for unlicensed games? Yeah, I, I haven't run into any problems. Okay, so... Let's go see what they're saying over here. It promises to light to the light warriors the king builds a bridge to the mainland. Once across the warriors realize that their adventure has just begun. Wide realms lie before them and great deeds await those wait wait for the coming of bold heroes. The cave of Matoya. <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. First, they seek out the friendly witch who dwells in a cave. They learn new secrets from Matoya and her broom. Oh, so her broom tells secrets. That's, that's fun. Not the crystal ball, but the fucking broom. Okay. Uh, let's see. Battling the pirates. Then the light warriors turn eastward to the village of Provoka, where fierce pirates have laid siege to the town. A desperate battle begins! So you gotta fight, you gotta fight these motherfuckers. <laughs> Thank you, Y Cats, for subscribing for three months. Thank you so much. Hey Retro K, thank you. Alright, the voyage of the pirate ship. There it is. The defeated pirate captain gives us his ship to the warriors. Now they can sail to new shores, but they can land only on those equipped with a stone pier. After stocking up at Provoka, they head southwest. See, I'm getting prepped for um, my Final Fantasy playthrough, right? I get it, Joey. Oh, it's your birthday too? Well, happy birthday, Kaplan FX. We're both November 10th babies. It's awesome. Scorpio power. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Alright, the Sleeping Elf Prince. The journey by sea brings the Light Warriors to a wide land in the south peopled by elves. Their prince, however, lies under a deadly sleeping spell. A new task begins! So now you gotta go to quest to wake this motherfucker up. A village of elves. Whoa. I'm trying to read about my elf village. In this elf village, there lie many people who have died in battle. Visiting their graves, the light warriors pay their respects to the fallen heroes. Then there's the dwarf cave. I should have zoomed in, but the guy has a funny look on his face. Let me do this right. <sighs> I just think it's funny. Their faces make me laugh. What are we 
listening to now? Okay, we're still listening to Double Dragon 3 music. Alright, that's fine. Chill. Alright. Traveling further west, the Light Warriors discover a town of dwarves who live in Great Cave. Here they obtain riches and meet Narek, who have who must have explosive TNT to complete the channel he is to complete the channel he is digging to the Western Sea. Oh, okay. To get the TNT, they need a key from the sleeping elf prince. Well, they have a journey to go on, don't they? <laughs> Thank you so much, Eric72, for subscribing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, Cyborg. Thanks, Elser. Okay, uh, the castle of Astos. In the Northwestern Castle, the Light Warrior meets a mysterious king named Astos who has lost his crown. But there is more here than meets the eye! Ooh! Oh! Are those other eyes? Who's that? Huh? Huh? Oh my god, how long is this section? Fuck. <laughs> it's because I haven't played it, it's like, I... I don't know. I'm not interested in this. But actually, what's this guy? The the fiends in the marsh cave fiercely guard their treasure and the light warriors have never faced such an attack. In fact, they use 50 heal potions just to reach the crown. I've changed my profile picture yet again. Yeah, I changed it once. And then I didn't I was like, you know what? I don't I don't like that picture. I look too serious and like, I don't know. It wasn't Aaron. Now my profile picture feels just right. You know, it's like Goldilocks trying all the porridge and beds and shit. You gotta, you gotta find the right profile picture. And I hate taking selfies, so I only have so many. Alright, so we're looking for TNT. With the key, the band of heroes returns to Conaria and searches every locked door for the TNT Narek needs. To their great surprise, they also find a valuable item of power in a treasure chest. Mm. Ooh, we got some Super C music now. <gasps> How appropriate! Alright, the Earth Cave. In the far west lies a cave filled with evil. But the four heroes must penetrate the darkness and defeat a vampire to obtain the jewel. Now they're holding a giant banana. So there's banana time. Thank you, New Wave. Eat the porridge. Okay. I don't have any. Is porridge oatmeal? What is porridge exactly? I feel like it's oatmeal or cream of wheat or malta meal. I don't fucking know. Thank you, Cranix. Uh, okay, so now they're going to Volcano, you go to the skies. Now what's this? Final Fantasy Treasure Quest. Three big challenges. Keep seeking the special clues as you delve deeper into the game. Okay, so what is it? Question one. What is the name of the dancer? Question two. How old was Erdrick when he died? Question three. What is the value of the power staff? Mail them to us. Oh, remember when I used to like write things out and mail them? How cute. Banana Last Supper? That's what it looked like. Doesn't that look like a Banana Last Supper? What's going on there? It's supposed to be a canoe. I think it's a fucking banana. Hey, Breakpoint. Alright, so basically it's a Final Fantasy thing. What's What are the prizes? Answer the three questions from the main contest, and you are guaranteed to win an exclusive set of Final Fantasy power decals for your controllers. That's pretty cool. I wish they still made decals for controllers, because that could work on, like, could work on newer controllers. I mean, they sell stickers for the Switch and shit. I wish they made, like, cooler ones, though, that were just, like, designs and stuff, like the Nintendo Power ones for the NES. What are they doing? Okay, then if you, for July, August, you may win one of 500 adventure packs filled with treasure. And two lucky first prize winners will receive genuine full-size suits of armor perfect for battle or posing for snapshots. That's funny. <laughs> and then in September and October, 
By correctly answering these tough questions, you could win one of a hundred beautifully crafted crystal orbs, or you could become the grand prize winner. Imagine you and your best friend involved in a real adventure, piecing together clues, hunting through strange lands, and discovering treasure along the way. It's the Final Fantasy Treasure Quest, as close as you can come to actually being in a Final Fantasy adventure game. The entire quest will be professionally videotaped with you and your friends in costumes from Final Fantasy, so you can really relive the adventure from years to come. Are you up to it? Play Final Fantasy and find out! Aaron, if I subscribe, will you order pizza for your birthday? Well, thank you so much for asking, Highlander, but it's too late to order pizza. See, I said it's my birthday, because it's 12.51 a.m. 12.51 is an okay stroke song, too, by the way. But anyway, all the pizza places are now closed. So I'd have to order it tomorrow. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway. You need that videotape retro death? I wonder if this happened, and if there's any footage of it. Cause that'd be fucking cool. Here we go. This is what I wanted to see. Thank you, Tanuki. Maxim says I have a quantum break decal for my Xbox One controller. That's cool. For my um, Joy Cons, I have like I got some Princess Peach decals <laughs> from Target. They're actually pretty cute. And I know you can like order some on Etsy. But it's just like, I don't know, I mean, I guess they can't exist anymore, but it was just so cool, like, you know, you got your Nintendo Power Magazine, and you might find some decals in there, like, that's really cool. Those days are gone. Super C is your favorite Contra Wolfmaster. I go between Super C and the first one. I like them both a lot, but I probably do like Super C a little better. It's, it's very close. I do not have 24 hour pizza place where I live, no. I don't know why they don't exist everywhere. I feel like it would be a very lucrative business. Everyone wants pizza and people are on different schedules, you know? Some people work night shifts, etc. It's fucked up. What's happening? <laughs> The overhead levels are way better than the gallery shooting BS and Contra. Yeah, I don't mind the overhead levels. Um, they're pretty good. Yeah, I still need to get to Contra 3 and Hardcore. Hardcore kicks my ass. I can barely make it to, like... I make it to the first boss, and then I haven't made it past him. I need to, like, learn how to play that game, because I, I don't know. It kicks my ass. Contra 3, I would get a little further. <sighs> but, um, yeah, one day, for sure. Okay, Super C, look at this. Fucking cool. It says, the aliens are back and they don't intend to lose a second time to pick a couple of combat yahoos from a backward planet like Earth. <laughs> they just roasted Earth. But that didn't stop you in Contra, and it's not likely to stop you now. What may stop you are the eight grueling stages leading up to the final desperate battle with an indescribably weird alien Super C Super Fiend. Super C Super Fiend. I like that. If this game doesn't heat you, heat you up this summer, nothing will. <laughs> Ooh, this doesn't heat you up this summer, nothing will. <laughs> What's up, K-Train? Alright, so... Okay, so it takes you to stage two. They don't talk about stage one. That's interesting. Okay. So stage two, the first base. Want more into the breach. <laughs> the breach! To succeed here, you must change your strategy. The vertical scroll means you'll face attackers on four sides rather than three. Thank you so much, White Cats, for gifting a sub to Lauren64. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We don't talk about stage one around here. This <laughs> is Rex. Stage one is so pretty, though. It features that awesome sunset. Sup, no fear, boogeyman. 
All right. Dodge disaster. Gain time to plan. Gain time to plan moves by standing in the safe zones between the firing pattern of tanks. So okay, so they're saying, but right between here is a safe zone. Okay, watch your flank. Blast the tank. Hey, that rhymed. But yeah, I usually stand in the front for a bit. These I feel like I can usually like kill pretty fast just by standing in front. But yeah, that strategy works too. Let's see. Let me let me zoom in. I don't know if you guys can like totally. Ooh. Why not zoom in? See here, I usually just can kill them up front fast enough, but that is probably a better method. I don't know. Whatever. I have a trouble. I have trouble with this boss. I'm gonna say this boss kicks my ass a few times. Uh, let's see. The big gun. Dodging the shots of this giant gun isn't so tough if you keep if you keep to the bottom of the screen. Moved in the direction opposite the motion of the big gun. Well, obviously, but it's easier said than done, Nintendo Power. I hate that boss. So I always get trapped down here, and it fucking sucks, and then I die, and it's awful. <laughs> Thank you, Highlander723, for subscribing. Thank you so much. Which game is this music from right now? This is from... It was in Japanese, but it was a um, Power Ranger game. And now we're on to Mylon's secret castle. If you want to kill that boss super fast, be sure to have the spread shot get behind it and shoot the, green, the little green dude. You know what's funny? For like a year, I thought that um, these weren't people. I thought they were all guns. Like I even thought the gr I thought like the green guy was like a gun too. And then I looked closer, I'm like, oh, that's a person holding a gun. <laughs> I didn't know that. Alright, so, keep on moving. Uh, wait, 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 I didn't read this. Dodging the shots of the giant gun isn't so tough if you keep- Oh, I already read that part, okay. If you don't have a strong option, don't bother finishing off all the enemy troops or guns. Just before the big gun at the end, you can race past the two guns on each side and still take on the final enemy. What? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay. I was confused. I was like, what is she talking about? Okay, let's zoom back out. Whoa. Thanks for hanging out, uh, Sergio. Okay. Boing. There we go. Thank you so much, Thunderfist. It's very nice of you. Thank you so much for watching the stream. Thank you, Jdred, for gifting a sub to the Fleminem. Thank you, Jdred, for all the gift subs. I really do appreciate that. And now we're listening to Top Gun Second Mission. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, New Wave. Alright, stage three. The jungle! I guess, you know what, I gotta keep zooming in. So you guys can't see that. Just kinda, hold on, hold on. See that, I can't push it. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's a little better. It's the best I can do. Don't let the pleasant greenery fool you. This jungle has been planted with booby traps and an alien army. That's true. They'll come at you from the bushes, the trees, and pop up suddenly in front of you. And they drop into the water, too. It's fucking nuts. Mow down the mortar. Staying on your toes isn't easy in this swampy jungle, but it's vital. Once you spot the mortar, it begins launching its rounds. Keep to the far left of the screen, just out of range, and continue firing at the mortar until it's destroyed. Don't move too close to the mortar or you won't be able to move back out of range. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Pixel Champion, for subscribing for five months. Thank you so much. Alright. <sighs> Diving for cover. 
About midway through the jungle, the action really heats up. If you need a break, dive into the pools and stay submerged. Underwater, no one can harm you. When I found that out, the first time I was playing it, I was so shocked because I, I feel like this is a game where you could totally still get shot underwater. Like, it's amazing they were, like, that lenient. They're like, you know what, let's give them a break. Let's just let them hide under the water. So thank you, Contra. Super C. Angle of attack. Alien troops have heard about your success and they've been waiting up in the trees. In this area, run forward, firing at 45 degree angle. First, defeat the three aliens in front and then turn and neutralize the attack from the rear. I have trouble with NES games and like firing at an angle. I don't know if, because it's like, if I'm, especially if you're supposed to stay still, it's like I just, I like run all over the place. It's a fucking mess. So instead, sometimes I just, like, jump and, like, <laughs> fire <laughs> like an idiot, but I don't know. Thank you, Jeffka Gamer, for subscribing for 23 months. Thank you. I hope you've been having a good stream. I know you played Rise Star recently. That's a game Mike really likes. I like what I've played with it, but I haven't done a dedicated playthrough yet, but I probably should. Thank you, Junozor. All right. It's Contra, not Saving Private Ryan. Well, whatever. Oh, this is the... Mm, I like him. See, I think that is supposed to be him. Right? It's cool. I want them to make, like, a figure of that with, like, your little dude standing on top of him. That'd be great. This mechanical monster doesn't need to spin a web to catch its prey. To defeat it, dodge its stomping feet and its destructoid beams. Fuck, destruct... Destructroid is a really good uh, word. And yes, this is Gunsmoke. Gun dot smoke, sorry. I call it gun dot smoke, but <laughs> gun period smoke, whatever. Alright, the earthquake zone. Here we go. When you feel the ground shake, rattle, and roll, slow down. You're in the middle of the earthquake zone. Move one step at a time. If the ground drops away, jump immediately or you'll be swallowed. And don't forget to defend against crazed attackers. This is great. Death Dropper. This fiendish machine... Hold on, let me fix this. Okay. This fiendish machine can really get the drop on you. Fire straight up at the moving targets, dodging back and forth to avoid the falling bombs. If you jump up, however, you can kiss a life goodbye. It all comes down to good timing and quick reflexes. Using the spreader option will help you to win quickly. No shit, using the spreader option all the time will help you to win qu quickly. See, the, the problem is keeping the spread. I, I admit, that I lose my spread rather quickly and it sucks. Did I get a Yoshi cake? No, I want a Yoshi cake. That'd be fucking cool. All right, what's going on here? Hold on, I gotta grab a drink really, really fast because talking so much makes me want to drink water really fast. So let me grab some and I'll be right back, okay? Anyway, okay, stage four, the inner base. Home to elevators, angels, and floating blue bubbles, it seems that this should be a truly uplifting stage of this game. But the truth is that these lofty enemies are trying to keep you down. All you can do is press ahead and keep your spirits high. Up. Sorry. Yeah, this, this stage is a bitch. I don't like these angel gargoyle things. Let me zoom in. Alright, know thy enemies. The lower shaft, <laughs> sorry, the lower shaft is the home of winged aliens who attack like avenging angels. Most of the time they'll jump down at you from above, so your best defense is the spreader. The spread is always the best defense! The trick is keeping it. It's like no shit, you should, oh you should use the spread, really? Fuck. Anyway. <laughs> 
zoom out. Okay, laser shower. The laser shower, I had such a hard time with the laser shower at first. I don't know. It's just like, it's so simple if you just like time it. But the first time I was like all over the place. <laughs> it's a mess. Anyway, the laser shower is trying to clean up your act with a deadly dose of white light. It looks pretty menacing, but in fact, it's one of the easier enemies. Just make sure you have the spreader. How many times are we going to say, just make sure you have the spreader? It's like, yeah, if you can keep it, you know, and get it again when you need it. Shoot out a space in the center of the shower head and continue firing from the safe spot. And there you go. Just got to shoot it. <sighs> the ultimate weapon. Thank you, Santi. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, I did put out a new video earlier today. Uh, just a pickup video about some cool things I've recently got, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you've watched it, it's just a fun little video. It's chill. I like it. <laughs> um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I think after that I'm going to try to do more premieres on YouTube of videos, and then maybe even stream the premiere here. Like, we can watch the premiere together. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of different things to do, so maybe that'll happen in the future. Thank you, Wolfmaster, for letting me know. You'll use your laptop keyboard. See, it's like certain things... Okay, so about the keyboard controls on NES games, I feel like, uh, for example, Batman on the NES, when you're with the little jumpy guys, what stage is that? You're like in a sewer and there's like these jumpy guys and they like just get on top of you. I feel like if you use a keyboard it's easier to p use your fists. Yeah, I think it's the third stage. Uh, but I feel like with a controller it's like almost impossible and I always have to use like an item. So I don't know, I feel like using a um... a uh... a laptop, I mean a keyboard is kind of like I don't know, it's a little trick. <laughs> For certain games, I think. Thank you, D-Man. Okay. Uh, ultimate weapon. As you see, using the spreader is almost always the key to defeating the toughest enemies. In the elevator shaft shown here, you can find the spreader a little more than halfway up. Make sure you snag it. See, that's good to know, because they keep saying, use the shredder, use the shredder. Well, spreader. Fuck, I can't talk spreader. But it's like, oh, okay, you can find it here. Thank you. That's a good tip. Jader? Yeah, the jumpy things are called jaders, right? Or something? Anyway, from Batman. Blast the barrels. From the far right hand side of the screen, shoot out the barrier to the left of. <clears throat> if you shoot out the barrier from out in the open, you'll be wiped out. Go to the far right. Okay. The lower shaft. Okay, we're going down the shaft. Angels and disc guns make for a dangerous combination. While the guns pin you down, the angels attack in mass. <laughs> Your best bet is to shoot out of the disc guns first and then turn to up to the angels. Move slowly, one ledge at a time. This area is kind of a bitch, I'm not gonna lie. Alright. Thank you, Jack. Okay, um, let me zoom out some more. See, the way my tripod is, I can't, I don't really have the room to pull the magazine back. Okay, stage five, the cliff. Why should you climb the brutal cliff? Not just because it's there, that's for certain, but because you'll have to. On your way up, you'll meet aliens propelled by jetpacks, robotically controlled guns in the cliff, and treacherous giant stones that crush everything in their path like steamrollers. Not wrong. Attack gymnastics. The rooftop guns are best taken from behind. Jump down from the level above, then quickly jump over the gun and feed it hot lead. <laughs> the way they phrase certain things makes me laugh. Feed it hot lead. lead. <laughs> Fuck. Um, crypto crustacean. Ooh. 
The Skull Dropper is another tough target for you and the Spreader. First clean up the attacking skulls, then aim from the blinking red eye on the Skull Dropper itself. As always, quickness counts for a lot. Shoot the skulls, aim for the red eye. Oh, I remember this guy. Make some alien jelly. Ooh. Rolling stones. Near the cliff, you'll encounter huge stones that gather no moss. In the area indicated, jump straight up to set the stones rolling harmlessly by. Getting the spreader. Look, look for swiftly rising option capsules where indicated. The capsule to the right should have the spreader, which is always your best weapon. Know thy enemies. They're saying it again. Moving up the cliff face, you'll encounter many permanent gun emplacements that pop up. Reminder what, where they are. Wait. Remember where they are and take them out quickly. The jetpack troops attack from below. Use the spreader against them. Alright. Nothing like hot lead for breakfast, says Tanuki. Alright. Here we go. Entry to HQ. So I feel like this level, I think it's cool. I think it's kind of scary and funny with the like vagina teeth opening things here. And I like this guy's face. It's funny. But I feel like it just kind of looks shitty. Like doesn't it? Like the, It's like the colors or something. It just looks kind of shitty. And I hate to say that because I fucking love this game. But I feel like this level just looks kind of shitty. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's see what's going on here. The subterranean gauntlet run is lined with living organisms, things that chase you, spit at you, and worst of all, chomp you like a great white shark. Danger will surround you on every side. A straight ahead attack is your best bet. The alien and the snake. A huge snake will appear from the side and circle around you. Attack this first and then go after the head of the alien in front of you. While the snake is gone, fire directly at the alien's head, but keep an eye open for red mites and the reappearance of the snake. That is true. I have never played uh, Contra and DOS, no. Uh, this does not have an issue number. This is early. This is from 1990. Super C, before they started doing the numbers. Yeah, it just says May, June, 1990. Red mites? I don't know. Sounds gross. But I think they mean these little red popping up dudes. I don't fucking know. Little critters! Speaking of little red mites... Hordes of little alien creatures haunt the path you must take. They'll attack you from every side, but they'll get relatively slow. Get the spreader to wipe them out easily. Big mouths. These yawning jaws only multiply if you shoot them. They also appear at random. I did not know they multiply if you shoot them. See, I, I, read, I learned something. Your best strategy is to march straight ahead and shoot at the other creatures. Ah, uh huh. Okay. See, learn something. See, that's me going bing, 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 pew, pew, pew. Know thy enemies again. Blue mites inhabit this gloomy place. They're both slow and predictable, but you can easily forget them, and that's dangerous. Big red mites will circle you, allowing other creatures to attack while you're trapped. Yeah, and that sucks. Thank you, Slimadian. Okay, now we're on a stage seven. Doo -doo -doo. Headquarters. Congratulations, you've reached the strangest and most dangerous stage so far. Here you will face erupting pods, ew, and per perilous plants that eventually come face to face with a nightmare. Spread the word. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Thank you, Elias, for subscribing for 60 months. Thank you. 
Spread the word. Just as you fall out of the bubble tunnel, shoot the capsule to the right. It contains a spreader, but it appears very quickly, so be ready for it the instant you leave the tunnel. The purple pulper. <laughs> Half plant, half beast, and entirely alien, this enemy advances slowly while firing burning spores. If you stand just out of range, however, and move back as it moves forward, you'll defeat it easily. Ooh. Oh, sorry. But yeah, those purple guys aren't too tough. The Temple of Terror. Ooh. The alien giant is vulnerable in the chest opening. Leap up and shoot at the opening while dodging the spiked balls. Ew. As you've learned, the spreader will be a great advantage to this battle. The final stage! Isn't that cool? You can see this whole thing mapped out. I like it. Heat-seeking alien mines, explosive bubbles, and swift monsters are just the beginning of what to expect in the last stage. Clearly, Konami has spread no expense to challenge even the hottest power player. Yeah, even that guy in the front might have trouble. Why do they keep calling it the spreader? Because I guess back then they said spreader. I've always heard it called spread. The spread gun. Um... Let's see... If you make it to the end, uh, you'll certainly earn your stripes in the battle that follows. Our hats are off to all those who succeed. Alright, so that's all for uh, Contra, Super C. Now we're on to Dino Wars! Yep. Now it's on Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Did I finish it? No, I haven't finished it yet. Um, I've only streamed it twice so far. I was gonna stream it tonight, but uh, my hands kind of hurt, so hopefully tomorrow I can go back to it, but I do plan on finishing it, yes. The manual called it spread. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes Nintendo Power would say different things, so. Here we go, there's some rad racer. I'm dancing right now, but you can't see it. Hey look, your favorite game, says Wolfmaster. <laughs> Alright, so this was in my video I did a few months ago called Five Bad NES Games. People got very upset and had a lot of different op and angry opinions. So you, if you haven't seen it yet, feel free to yell at me too in my uh, Five Bad NES Game video. Anyway, Dino Wars, I don't think it was the worst, but it, it wasn't good. But that's just my opinion. Hey, Manuel. Alright, so, the it says Dino Wars, the destruction of Spondylus. Good old Spondylus. Armies of mechanical beasts called Robosaurs have been sent to destroy the seven Spondylus planets by the sinister Dr. Brainius. It's up to you, Professor Proteus, famed inventor and designer of a new breed of giant robots, to fight your way to the control center of each planet. Enter your own mechanical beast, the, in the incredible Cybosaurus, and neutralize the main computers. Pilot your machine over the surface and jump out and fight to the planet's core. Alright, so basically you're a dude and then you jump into a robot dinosaur suit and you fight other dinos. <laughs> um, I don't know, I would play more of it because in the video I did it was kind of like more of a uh, first reaction to some of these alleged bad games. Um, so I mean I didn't play a ton of it because that wasn't the point but I don't know, I would try this. Maybe on stream we can do a Dino Wars stream. Maybe. Alright, so... Oh my god... Ah. Watch out for enemy shells! See, I, how far did I get? Fight to the main computer? I want to make it to the main computer! 
You didn't realize there was a write-up of this game? Yeah, I didn't know either. I don't know. Some people really like it, and that's okay. Because different opinions are fine. Oh, speak of the devil. Skate or die, too. Well, you know how I feel about Skate or Die 1. Apparently people think it's a fucking iconic great game. But I don't. Anyway, so this is a lot of Dino Wars. I'm not going to go through it all. But, um... See, on paper, like, looking at the stages, I'm like, this looks fun. I like the vibe of, like fucking robot dinosaurs, that's nuts. But I just feel like it, like, it just the controls are kind of shitty, but I don't know, I would try it again. But Skater Die fucking sucks. I stand by that. I, I kind of want to do a video playing the whole game and then going, you know what? Still sucks. <laughs> anyway, Nintendo Power Awards, 89. So let's see. Who won for best graphics and sound? Mega Man 2! This music sounds like fucking balls. What the f I'm skipping this track. I can't. I can't. Can I skip? There we go. Shadow the Ninja. Much better. It just sounded like... <laughs> the fuck? Anyway, <laughs> all right. So Mega Man Two. Now that's a good game. The nuts and bolts look of Mega Man Two made a big hit with our voters. Mechanical monsters like the Fan Fiend and Atomic Chicken. I did like that Atomic Chicken. That was funny. Give the game a high tech feel that it's complemented by a driving rock beat. Can't go wrong with some Mega Man Two. Best challenge, Ninja Gaiden. All right. Anyone who has battled through to the end of Ninja Gaiden will agree with those who voted for this game. Every step is challenged by Wakio's henchmen. And to become a master of this ninja arts and swordplay takes lightning reflexes. That is very true. I have yet to beat uh, uh, Ninja Gaiden 1. I was, I was practicing Ninja Gaiden 3 a lot, like a year ago. Um, and then I just stopped, and I wish I didn't. But I would like to get back to that. You beat Tiger Ninja Gaiden, like the Tiger Handheld. <laughs> Alright, best theme. Fun. They're America's favorite characters in a fast action game, a combination that's tough to beat. Besides, what other game depends on the skillful use of nunchucks and pizza? We're talking weird but wonderful here. I agree with that. I really like that game. I should uh, stream this eventually or do a video. It's a good game. I like it. Best play control? Uh, Mega Man 2. Damn. Mega Man 2 is sweeping up the awards. Um, when it comes to jumping, climbing, zapping enemies, and using nifty items like levitation platforms, nothing comes close to Mega Man 2. There are more ways to get through the game than days in the year. It's a good game. I like that game. I want to play Mega Man 5 next, I think. Because I'm weird. And because I suck at Mega Man 3, and every time I attempt Mega Man 3, I just get really angry. And it bums me out. Alright, best character, Zelda 2 The Adventure Link. He's the hero who does it all, from rescuing princesses to casting magic spells. Link from Zelda 2, the adventure Link, is puckish, lucky, persistent, and loyal qualities that win him friends wherever he goes. Best Ending, Ninja Gaiden. It's no mystery that Ninja Gaiden takes a second nester with its stunning surprise ending. The use of cinema displays to reveal plot between action sequences is a winner. The ending is well worth the effort. Best player versus player, Tech Mobile. When you and a <clears throat> when you and a friend scrimmage with Tech Mobile, you might just forget that you're playing on a computer. Intensity like that only comes from a human opponent and great programming. Overall. Oh shit, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles won overall. Nice. 
I wish that was a real trophy, like a, like an actual statue that exists. That would be awesome. Hey, Rygar. Okay, so it says, This year, the honors go to the Turtles for Best Overall Video Game of 1989. And it's well deserved. The importance of the fun factor is clear. Sophisticated graphics and the complex, bleh, the complex gameplay alone are not enough. But combine them in a game like TMNT and you've got a hit. From the opening screen right on through to the end, you're swept into the wild world of turtle triumphs and trouble. The play is challenging and the graphics excellent. The sound drives you on and the best of all, you control the fate of Don, Leo, Mike, and Raph as they track down clues leading to Shredder. Let's give them a big hand or maybe a pizza. And of course, they include that iconic. That, uh, that stage is a bitch. Lots of memorization. Thank you, Savage, for letting me know. Did the kid at the front of the magazine write this? Oh, the cocky one? Maybe. I'd like to see him write an article. <laughs> Thanks, Nintendo fan. Alright, so let's see. So now to wrap up the Nestor Wars awards. I almost said the Nestor Wars. <laughs> okay, the Nestor Wars have been brought to you by all of our readers who took the time to fill out their ballots and send them in. Thanks for helping to make this the most exciting awards presentation ever. As you may have noticed, these awards are for all the games that were released during 1989. That means that the latest games, like Super Mario 3, Super C, aren't eligible until next year when we hold our third annual Power Awards. And there he is! Well, that's it for another year, gang. But with so many great games coming out, it's never too early to start reviewing them. By filling out Power Player meters on Nintendo Power Reviews, you'll have a great record of 1990 games by voting, them t by voting time next year. I'll see you then! Thank you very much, Circle Hairman, for subscribing for nine months. Thank you so much. Hey, academics. All right, and now of course it's the Nestor comic. Okay, Howard and Nestor. I like how he crosses out his name and writes it himself, because he's an individual. He is unique. And he does not do what the man tells him, because he's Nestor. <laughs> Manual says, I really miss game magazines overall. We don't even get manuals anymore. It's so true. I get so pissed when it's like, I buy a Switch game or something, and it's like this big, like, you know, like, case. And then you open it up, and there's a tiny little fucking cartridge. It's like, okay, where's my fucking, you know, manual? It's stupid. They need manuals. Anyway, so let's see what's happening here. Welcome to R&D, Nestor. I'm happy you can make it. Sure, glad to help you out. So this looks like, I don't know, it's some lab? Or doctor's appointment? I don't know. The NES interface modulator allows us to go inside the games to look for bugs and test trips. That's why I'm here. Look out, you insects. Nestor the tester is on the job. I feel like he talks like that. So I will now be doing the voice of Nestor like that. <laughs> Not insect bugs. Programming bugs. Come on. The interface is ready. He's like, you fucking idiot. Why does he have cat ears on? Is this the first appearance of gamers being obsessed with cat ears? <sighs> anyway. Of course, I knew that. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. <laughs> Howard and Nestor step into the machine for interpec portation. Limited run does manuals for their releases. That's true. But I mean, like, you know, like your average Nintendo release, they're not going to include a fucking manual. So everything sucks now, that's why. And that's why I'm a retro streamer. Because <laughs> that's where my heart is. What systems were you wishing your controller decals for? Um, I would like some for my uh, Super Nintendo controllers, and I would like better ones for the Switch. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe a cool Game Boy one. I wish they made, like, when the DS was out, I wish they made, like, Nintendo Power decals for that. I think that would have been cool. Anyway. So today we're scheduled to check on the warp whistle so we can get one over here in the mini fortress. You'll have to use your head in here. What do you mean? I always use my head. <sighs> you have to break that brick to get the leaf. No problem. Ouch! Actually, it hurts less if you punch it with your hand. Hurry up. I'm ready for takeoff. Sorry, they don't seem to fit your head. It's too big. Oh, so they're not cat ears. They're raccoon ears. Thank you, Awesome Core. Do my Nintendo Power magazine still have the posters inside? Some of them do. These are mostly Mike's. Um, but a lot of the posters are on his wall. But there's some in here. This one doesn't have a poster. Well, let's see, now what's happening? Why did I start reading this? I don't want to finish it. I'm testing you. There's not enough runway. Deep breath, wait, deep within the mini fortresses are bug hunters search for the ward whistle. Sure, there is, sure there's flap harder. Oof! Once you're flying, keep going up off the screen. When you disappear, keep flapping and move to the right. Then when you can't go any further, press up. This raccoon stuff is for the birds. I'll just take this door. Don't be a lazy asshole. Find the warp whistle. <laughs> Thank you so much, Speedpunk96, for subscribing for 19 whole months. Thank you so much. Oh, is this the issue that a Final Fantasy poster? That's cool. All right, now what's happening? So he doesn't want to learn how to do the, you know, the little flying tail thing. So he's like, am I growing or are these spikes dropping? Bonk. Are you okay? Yeah, sure. I enjoy having my head used as a pincushion. You should try it. And then, for some reason, this just says, stop bugging me, Tony. <laughs> so there you go. There's this Nestor comic. Ready to move on? Don't know about you. Ooh, Codename Viper. I like that game. Let's read about Codename Viper. What is Bonk doing in a Nintendo magazine? <laughs> Are you saying that Nestor looks like Bonk a little? beverage break. Ugh. Gotta stretch. I feel like I'm in a really weird tense position. <laughs> Gotta stretch. Okay. Go ahead. Make Kenny's day. So this kind of reminded me of like a little bit of Contra, visually, a little bit of Batman. I liked it. Anyway, so stage one, you're in the Brazilian jungle. Kenny's first mission takes him through the steaming Brazilian jungles and a village well defended by troops of the drug syndicate. Treacherous waterfalls and deadly snipers will make their first mission a tough one. So yeah, here's a map of the game, if I can fucking do this. Don't let the frogman jump on you. Thank you, vice versa. It looks like Rolling Thunder. Yeah. Okay, I want to get... Hold on. Let's see what else. Wait, I'm thinking of a different game. I need to look something up. I feel like maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. So 
Sorry, I'll get- I just gotta look up some gameplay because I'm like, wait. Oh my god, you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking of Vice Project Doom. <laughs> It kind of looks like the same cover, and I'm like, wait, this isn't the right game. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. So, Codename Viper. Uh, let's take back everything I've said about it. Because I was thinking of Project Doom. Anyway. <laughs> so, this actually, I, I feel like I've played this a little bit, but... I don't know, I don't remember enough to like comment on it really. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it looks like something I could potentially like. The sprites look, cause see the sprites looked a little larger and I was like, wait, what is this? Anyway, so that's Codename Viper. It has a big spread about it. And now we're on Barai Fighter. <laughs> Prequel would be codenamed Diaper. <laughs> well, welcome to Twitch, Classic G. And hey, Ellie Naomi. Maxim says, I think the late 1989, early 90s, Nintendo Power had NES and Game Boy decals, and issue 44 with Mickey Mouse had the SNES decals. Oh, I'll have to look that one up. I want to see what those look like. Because I haven't... I know what the NES ones look like. But I I can't recall the Super Nintendo ones. I'm going to write that down. Thank you. Shoot 44. So. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. <laughs> yep, Japanese Dracula's Curse music. I like how Nintendo fan right away could tell it was like the Japanese version. <laughs> Thank you, Twin Comet. I appreciate that. Alright, so now we're in Barai Fighter. Now, I don't know anything about this game. Do you guys, are you guys familiar with this one? Oh, it's one of those where you're like flying but on a spaceship. You're just like a jetpack dude. This looks like it could be fun. What's up, Power of Positivity? Is this your first time I stream? Thank you. Yeah, right, I usually I do Let's Plays, but right now we're doing a magazine stream. Alright. So let's see. Bright Fighter, listen closely. Your mission is to penetrate the alien fortress. Isn't it always? There's always an alien fortress. They'll be expecting a full frontal attack. So a lone attacker like you may go unnoticed at first. Good luck, Bright Fighter. You'll need it. Alright, so you're basically, it's like a flying around shmup type of thing. I might like this. I would check this out. Let's get a better look at some of the stages so you guys can see it. That's cool. I like this artwork right here. It's very, like, late 80s. I like it. Let's zoom back out. Alright. So this is a big, uh, another big, um, section on this game. I would play this. I would check that out. Alright, so now we're in the top 30. Okay, so it says... Is this ink? Okay, there we go. If you've been following the top 30 for the last several issues, you'll notice that some major changes have occurred. The old top 3 were swept by a couple of rising stars. Super Mario 3 and Tetris. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles dropped to 3rd place from its lofty position of number one, but we expect it will rebound. Another surprise is that The Legend of Zelda is on the rise, up from 6th to 4th since the March-April issue. Alright, so number one is Mario Bros. 3. 
Number two, Tetris. Number three, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not surprised. These are all iconic good games. Number four is Zelda. Five, Legend of Link. The Legend of Link. Can you tell I'm like... <laughs> uh, I can never speak. <sighs> the Legend of Zelda. And then The Adventure of Link is number two. Thank you, Puppet J. Have you ever played all the games in a Nintendo Power Magazine? What do you mean? Do you mean like go through a Nintendo Power Magazine and play every single game? No. That could be a fun challenge though, like just pick an issue and play them all. Your first time playing Batman NES was 2015, still an amazing game. Yeah, I played it for the first time around 20... 2017? Um, I love that game. That's now one of my favorite games of all time. No, number six is Batman. It says, No one knows where Batman gets his toys, but you can get all the action of Gotham's greatest good guy in this glorious game. It's a really good game. I love that game. I also like Zelda 2. I think I like Zelda 2 better than Zelda 1. Shadowgate. I know people love Shadowgate. Um, I've never played it because it doesn't really look like my type of game, but... I know it's popular, so it makes sense to number seven. It says, what could be more fun than being lost in a haunted castle? Nothing. If you're a diehard Shadowgate fan. Super Mario 2 is number eight. Although Mario and friends may be asleep in the world of dreams, way to give away the ending. God. Their adventure will keep you up late into the night. Mega Man 2, number nine. Mega Man will never rest while Dr. Wily is on the loose. The same could also be said for, wait, said of the many mega fans. Ninja Gaiden number 10. Ryu is still hot on the revenge trail and Ninja Gaiden is still in the top 30. Alright, then what's, what's left? Dragon Warrior, Disney's DuckTales, Double Dragon 2, Robocop, Tecmo Bowl, Metroid, Battle of Olympus, Mario Brothers, Faxanadu, Double Dragon, Bionic Commando, Paperboy, Blaster Master, Champion Bowling, Championship Bowling, Popeye, Legacy of the Wizard, The Magic of Shahrazad. I have not heard of that. Number 27. The Magic of Sher Shahrazad. 28, Back to the Future. Yikes. 29, Rad Racer and Guardian Legend at number 30. Shahrazad is how I always pronounce this, said Nintendo fan. Ooh, what's over here? Players' picks, pros' picks, and dealers' picks. Alright, so let's just take a second and look. My voice is starting to go out, so I'm not going to read every single one. But, so the people actually reading choose these. Then the pros choose those. And these are the game counselor's choices. So that's interesting. Hey, user war. I think a lot of people would <laughs> strongly disagree with Back to the Future being a good game. I'm sure there's some person out there, though. Some person likes it. Alright, new games now available. Adventures of Lolo 2, Rocket Ranger, Wheel of Fortune, Family Edition, fuck yeah, Tombs and Treasure, and Journey to Silius. And yes, Mom has her mom's shirt because they want to show that evil moms can play Nintendo. Find that an interesting choice. Anyway, we think that these new games have a lot to offer, but we just didn't have enough room in this issue to give them all full reviews. Each game has several unique features and megabits of excitement to speed up those endless days before summer vacation. So if the springtime doldrums are leaving your NES cold, heat it up with these titles. Why is it like a Thanksgiving thing? Doesn't that seem weird? It says May, June, and then it says Dear Mom. Oh, is this supposed to be Mother's Day because Mother's Day is in May? That's what, I thought this was Thanksgiving, but okay. So it's Mother's Day. That makes more sense. Because I was like, what the fuck? Your mom loves Little Big Planet. That's cool. 
Photon Earth says she's playing Dino Wars. <laughs> Uh, no, sorry, the links aren't enabled. But yeah. Alright, so let's see what, what's over here. Adventures of Lolo 2! I suck at Adventures of Lolo. It stresses me out. <laughs> I don't get very far, but, you know, people love those games. I know they're good, I just personally suck at it. Rocket Ranger, though. What's Rocket Ranger? This one's not ringing a bell. This kind of looks like a... Whatchamacallit. Oh my god, is that Legends of the Hidden Temple? Is that the base? <laughs> Just kidding. But okay, Rocket Ranger looks potentially fun. Yoshi's trying to beat Shinobi Arcade right now. That game is fucking tough. Um, I did a video on it a few years ago. I really like the arcade version, but, um, I'd like to beat it. I have yet to do that. Wheel of Fortune Family Edition. This is something Mike and I would play. We might have played it. I don't think we've played the NES version, though. Tombs and Treasure. What the hell is this? Vast wealth and danger lie hidden in an ancient Mayan ruin. Already one expedition has failed, falling victim to evil demons which are trapped in the tombs and pyramids. Leading a party of three, you must retrace the steps of the lost expedition, battle spirits from the Mayan past, piece together puzzles that have defied understanding for a thousand years, and stay alive in the process. It won't be easy, you'll have to destroy, but you'll have to try every command and item, and you'll need some luck too. Okay, so this looks like something I would not enjoy, but cool. Wheel of Fortune has a mobile app, really. <laughs> Journey to Silius! Yeah, this one's a hard game. On a hold on. <gasps> on a war ravaged planet, Jay sets out to avenge the death of his father. He learns that terrorists who threatened the existence of the space colony were involved, and now he must finish the mission his father began. Armed with only a pistol and shotgun, as uh, as he makes his way through the ruins, Jay finds better weapons and power-ups as he progresses. It takes fast reflexes to dodge the mortar rounds and rocket launchers, not to mention the terrorist-controlled killer robots. And it gets worse with every step onto the journey to Silius. Terrifying. <laughs> Thank you so much, Colorose, for subscribing for 13 months. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I suck at that game. I've never gone far in it. But, ooh. So, okay, I freaking love this p image right here. I kind of want to, like, I wish I could tear this out and put it on my wall. I just really like, I like, I like the top-notch graphic design of the time. It's just, I like this image. I want it on my wall. But anyway, so they're going to talk about Batman, Gargoyle's Quest, Kicks. I like that. Dedalian Opus, Base is Loaded, NFL Football, Fist of the North Star, and Shanghai. Oh, here we go. Batman on Game Boy. I like this game. The farthest I've ever gotten was the shmup style level. And then I just got too tired and gave up. <laughs> but it's a fun game. I like it. I like how he's like cute little Batman. Batman. Let me see if they... I try to zoom in. See how little he looks? He's all smushed. But yeah, I, I like this game. I, I mean, I don't think it's as good as the NES game, of course. But I like it. So it's like, it's... See, it's like, it's kind of confusing because it's like, well to me I think it's kind of weird. It's like, there's Sunsoft Batman NES, Sunsoft Batman Game Boy, um, I believe it's also Sunsoft Batman on Master System, I could be wrong but I think that's right, and it's like they're all drastically different. I mean this follows kind of the same vibe as the NES game but like the Master System version is totally different. And isn't it also Sunsoft Batman on Genesis? It's like what the fuck? 
Anyway, I'm just bitching. I just wish they would give them separate titles. Because when you say Sunsoft Batman, it could vary, um, you know, based on the version you have. Have I streamed this? I have not streamed it, but I've done a video on it on Aaron Plays a few years ago. So you can find that on my Aaron Plays channel. Oh yeah, the PC Engine one. That's another one that's just called Sunsoft Batman. And that one's like totally different. It's kind of like Bomberman, kind of. It's weird. I really like it. I did a video on it, and I think I also streamed it, but I feel like on stream people weren't that into it. Um, but I really like that game. It's probably one of those games that's more fun to play by yourself than to, like, watch. I don't know. Anyway, so of course, you know, you're in a factory, there's chemical spills, all the usual Batman Joker shit that everyone loves. I love it. It's cool. I like it. Alright, Gargoyle's Quest. I, the Gargoyle's Quest games I have trouble with. It, like, always takes me a really long time to get the hang of it. But, um, this, it's interesting. Because there's, like, kind of some RPG elements. It's weird. I don't know. But, yeah, so they give you, like, a little map of everything. Nintendo fan remembers when I streamed the PC Engine one. Okay, so I did stream it. Because I was kind of like, wait, did I stream it? Good old kicks. Quicks, kicks, whatever. It's just a simple, fun game. I've never played the Game Boy version, but I love that style of game. I just think it's really fun. It's simple and it works, you know? I did stream it. See, I, I don't know. It's like you do so much, you forget what you streamed, what you did a video on, and what you played by yourself. You know? Uh, okay, Dead Alien Opus. I have no idea what the hell this is. This one is a winner for fans of challenging piece-fitting puzzles. The puzzles in Dead Alien Opus from Vic Tokai start simple and become insanely perplexing in advancing stages. Complete the stages and build bridges to the next island. Okay. Huh. Interesting. I'd have to try that one out. I'm not sure. Is it Dandelion? It's like Day... Day Dalian. Day Dalian. Day Dalian. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Base is loaded. Okay, um, baseball. Fist of the North Star. Battle the best fighters in the world. One on one in a closed arena confrontation. Your battle is not nothing short of world domination. And you're Kinshiro, Fist of the North Star. It's from Electro Brain. I fucking love the name Electro Brain. Like, some crazy motherfucker was like, you know what? I'm gonna name my company Electro Brain. And it rules, because that's something, like, I would do. Anyway. <laughs> okay, more sports, NFL football. It's football. I don't know what else to say. Uh, Shanghai, what the hell is this about? Oh my god. Oh, is this like Mahjong or something? Or is this different? I don't know. It's, a, it's another puzzle game. Alright. New for, new for coming up Game Boy. Okay, what's coming up? Double Dragon on Game Boy. Wizards of Warriors X. Fortress of Fear. I know it's chapter 5, but I like to say X. Ooh, previews. Oh. Oh my god, I thought I said preview at sports games. I was gonna be like... <sighs> anyway, here's a peek at some games you'll see more of in the future issue. Previews. I like this. It's like little air balloons. That's cute. Ninja Gaiden 2, Star Tropics, The Moffat Conspiracy, and Crystallis. Crystallis, whatever. Ooh. The Dark Sword of Chaos. Okay. The Winds of Trouble are brewing for Ryu. Uh-oh. I like the cutscenes. Ninja Gaiden has really good cutscenes. I thought B was 5. Did I say X was 5? I don't fucking know. Here, call me out and do a psychoanalysis of why I said X was 5. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm tired. And I say stupid shit. Like, leave me alone. 
<laughs> X is 10. There we go. Thank you, Wolfmaster, for coming in with the correct answer, since I can be kind of an idiot sometimes. What's up, 21 Spilet? Thank you, XXV. Okay. Well, now that I outed myself as having trouble with Roman numerals, sorry. Let's say, let's see what's happening with the winds of trouble that are brewing for Ryu. A long year of peace and tranquility has passed since Ryu, Hayabusa, Tecmo's ninja hero fought and defeated Yakiro in the original Ninja Gaiden. But little does Ryu suspect that a shadowy figure stands atop a remote mountain plotting more trouble for him. His vacation from action is about to come to an abrupt end as Ninja Gaiden 2, the Dark Sword of Chaos. <laughs> Thank you, Tilty. Ooh, so now it's going to talk to us about that. Introducing Ashtar, a new master of chaos. Who is this cloaked mystery figure? What is his scheme? Even after hearing of the mighty Akira's defeat, he scoffs at Ryu's skill. As Ryu will soon discover through Ashtar's confidence is not unfounded. His evil plan to unleash the very forces of chaos against the world will become clear as the story unfolds in detailed animated cinema scenes. Deadly martial arts action! New ninja powers! Fuck yeah! Soon Ryu's challenge will begin, and the secrets of Ashtar's plan will be revealed in a special Nintendo Power Strategy Guide! Isn't that awesome artwork? I think that looks badass. I want to walk into that cave. Ooh, spooky. Thank you guys for the wishes. Here we go, Star Tropics. So people, like, really like this game, and, um, it's funny because the same day me and Mike both had, like, oh, somebody going, please play this. I'll try it out for sure. I just, I've never really looked at it because it just looks like something I'm not, like, super into. Like, this style of game. Um, but, you know, I believe it's good. Obviously. You know, it has a reputation for a reason. Um, I don't know. i try it. One day, we'll try Star Tropics. It's very Zelda, yeah. Do they give credit to the Ninja Gaiden illustrator? Um, uh, probably not. At least not, not in this issue, no. Maybe in the back. But the, um, illustrations are awesome. <sighs> Alright, so this is all about Star Tropics. I'm gonna gloss over it because I don't know anything about this game, really, so... You've been playing with Star Tropics 2, it's really hard. I feel like people like Star Tropics 2 more than Star Tropics 1. But, I mean, I, if I play it, I'd probably start with the first one. The Moffat Conspiracy. The Further Adventures of Super Spy Golgo 13. Two years in the making. So I don't know anything about Golgo 13 or Moffat Conspiracy, but it looks interesting. Kind of like Ninja Gaiden, it looks like it has some cool cutscenes. I don't know, I'd try it out, maybe. So you get shooting, 3D building interiors, action, driving, and one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, I'd probably check this out. It's a violent NES game, really? You hear great things about it? Okay, so, uh, I'll try it. It looks like a cooler James Bond. It's the longest running manga ever or something? Oh, okay, I didn't know that. That's cool. Um, I would try it. It looks cool. It has a sex scene? Oh, jeez. Here's another one everyone loves, Crystallis. I think Mike is trying- is, uh, gonna stream this soon, but, um... It looks cool. This game looks cool. I like the colors. Like, I like the choice of, like, blue. It's not just, like, sad dungeon blue. It's, like, a nice turquoise blue. <laughs> but, yeah, this looks cool. I would try it for stuff. <clears throat> Oh, it has a lot of cutscenes. Oh, well, what can you do? Everything has cutscenes, I guess. They've just gotten more and more obnoxious. Where it's like, now it's like you're watching a fucking movie. Uh, 
All right, so now we're in the counselor corner how, where they help you get through tough parts in games. <coughs> oh god, eight eyes. <laughs> oh my god, this game. I tried this game because it's like a Castlevania ripoff, but it's like really shitty. I was like, you know what, maybe it's playable. I personally think it's too shitty to play, but that's my opinion. Thank you, Pixel. Thank you. Okay, so this guy's asking about what order should I explore the countries. Okay. Search for hidden jars in the chambers. Yeah, I don't know. Does anybody like <laughs> eight eyes in here? Battle of Olympus. Battle of Olympus looks kind of fun. I've never played it, but it looks fun. So people have a lot of questions about Battle of Olympus. Hmm. Willow, how do I get the Spectre spell? Willow, I know I would not like. Um, Mike streamed it forever. <laughs> and I watched some of that and I was like, eh. Iron Sword. Iron Sword I really want to like, but I have such a hard time with the controls. I don't know. One day I'll try it again, but it's just... Eh. <laughs> okay, some Shadowgate questions. So let's see what the gameplay counselors have to say. Mark Cody's or Coates. He became a counselor in 89. He likes computers, chess, rowing. Highest game score. He finished 55 of Nobunaga's ambition in 17 game years. I'm not sure what any of that means. His favorite NES game is Super Mario 3. Paul Reed. He started in 89. He likes acting, cartooning, writing, and travel. Highest game store. Solved Ultima favorites NES game Mega Man 2. Thad Kreischer. He likes playing music, writing, hang gliding, and rock climbing. Uh, he completed Bionic Commando with one hand tying behind his back with a score of over a million points. If that's true, that's kind of nuts. Good for him. Favorite NES game? Mega Man. Kevin Johnson. He likes weightlifting, biking, sports. He got a very high score on Legendary Wings, and his favorite NES game is Battle of Olympus. Okay, the more Shadowgate stuff, which I don't know about, so. Ooh, classified information. Let's see what they say about Batman. Whilst the bomb releasing drop claws at first seems like a threat, you can use them to your advantage to have a very close drop claw target area and punch the falling bombs quickly and repeatedly. Okay, so it's telling you to farm here. That's nothing new. Everyone knows when you see those things, you farm there. What? Yeah, what about Astyanax? Because this game broke me. The maze of Castle Terrenia can be quite confusing to navigate as there are many teleport doors. We didn't even make it there. <laughs> I didn't make it to the maze, but I'm sure if I did, this would have broke me, because fuck mazes. I, I hate, I hate that. Uh, Mega Man 2, Password Bonanza. Oh shit. So they tell you everything you need to know about Mega Man 2. Passwords. Our ages have found out how to begin in Mega Man 2 with any or all of the special weapons, any number of energy tanks. Alright, so there's cheat codes right there. Someone was asking for cheat codes, and there you go, for Mega Man 2. Thank you, DWX. It just started, but thank you. Oh god, Castlevania Adventure! <laughs> Did I paint my nails another color? I don't know. My nails have been this color for like a week, or a few days. I don't know. Um... Oh my god. Yeah, the hidden rooms. I don't even know what to say. I liked this game, but then it got to a point where I said, fuck it. I think I liked, uh, what's it called? Legend of Belmont, or Belmont's Quest, whatever the fuck. That one was better. This one, there's so many ropes. All these fucking Castlevania games, it's like nothing but rope climbing. 
Belle wants revenge, thank you. More eight eyes. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't with that game. <laughs> Ooh, what's here? Video shorts. Phantom Fighter. Uh, let's see, what is this about? Martial arts and monsters aren't often mixed in comic books, television, or movies, even though the combination is a pretty cool concept. If you don't believe the idea has potential, watch Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, starring Peter Cushing, when it comes on The Late Show, or play Phantom Fighter. In this game, elements of ancient Chinese legends of strange floating undead phantoms called Kaionshis are united with the excitement of blockbusting kung fu. Alright, yeah, I don't, I don't know about Phantom Fighter. So it looks like, you know, Kung Fu. I don't, I don't know what else to say, because I haven't played it, but... Terra Cresta, I like that name. Okay. So it's like a shmup type thing. I haven't played this one, I wonder if Mike knows that one. Castle of Dragon. <laughs> Can you get a more, like, lazy title than Castle of Dragon? <laughs> more high fantasy action than advent an adventure for the NES. The evil Dragon Master has kidnapped the king's beloved daughter, Amarina, and taken her to the flame-filled castle of Dark Lar Larza. Alright, so I mean, I like games that are about, like, gothic castles, and, you know, there's, like dragons and spooky shit. I might like that game. The title is straight and to the point. I mean, it, it tells you what you're getting into, so I respect that. Snoopy! <sighs> Snoopy Sports. Which was originally Donald Duck, right? On the um, Famicom. Thank you, Lothos. Terra... Cresta is a shooter where you add parts to your ship. Okay, that sounds kind of interesting. Dusty Diamonds All-Star Softball. You know what? I think I played a little bit of that, and I actually um, enjoyed it. I don't really like sports games, but, like, hockey on NES and this one, and then there's some other one where I'm like, oh, I kind of like it. World Championship Wrestling. Jack, Nicholas's 18 greatest holes of major championship golf, don't care. Rollerball, I do like my pinball games, I'm not gonna lie, those are really fun to space out and play. Conflict, I have not played. Ghostbusters 2. Okay, I was thinking for a minute, new Ghostbusters, which was actually a good game. I got confused for a minute. Double Dare. I think I played Double Dare with Mike before. It's it's not good. <laughs> Kid Cool. Um, it's fine. I've played it like a little bit. I never got too into it. It's just, it's just very like generic and kind of bland if I remember correctly. NES Achievers. Okay, it says people who got high scores. Whew, or who beat stuff. So what are people bragging about? A lot of people beat Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. I fucking love Crazy Castle. I've streamed it a few times. It's so fun. It just goes on and on and on. And then before you know, it's done. It's good times. Casino Kid. I don't know about Casino Kid. Cobra Triangle is interesting. Uh, Clash at Demon Head. A lot of people finish that. Defender of the Crown, not ringing a bell. DuckTales, I feel like in one issues we looked through, it was just like, it was like this. Like, just a fuck ton of people defeating DuckTales. <laughs> Galaga, Godzilla, Gradius, good old Gradius, I love Gradius. I like Gradius 3, I think, the most. Iron Sword, Millipede, Monster Party. Monster Party, <sighs> it's like, I love how it looks. I love the sprites, I, um, I like, you know, the vibe of the game, I just, I don't know, there's something about the gameplay where I just don't enjoy Monster Party, and it makes me sad, because it looks like something I would really like, and every time I would try, it just was like, mm. Alright, some people, let me zoom in, 
Some people have beat Ninja Gaiden, Super Mario Land. Um, what else? A lot of people beat Shadowgate and Willow. Those seem to be the popular ones. Guardian Legend, Tetris. Game Boy version Tetris surprisingly has fewer people completing it. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but I don't know. I thought that would have more. What the hell's happening out here? Nintendo Power visits Boeing Flight Simulators. That's kind of cool. So this is one of their flight simulators right here. Like an early pilot wings. That's cool. Big news for comic fans. Ooh. Nintendo Comic System. That's cool. I've never looked at those. That's kind of cool. World Class Services. What's that? One of the keys to the Nintendo Entertainment System's success is the great network of product support that Nintendo has established. Oh, okay. So basically it's like a you need you need your stuff fixed, they will fix it. This is one of your favorite Castlevania tunes. It's really good. Um all the games have good music. Simon's Quest is really fucking good music. Is that Captain N? Yes it is! With Mario and Link. Oh my god! Can I wear that? Every day? Oh my god, they're talking about some treats they have. Out of the world munchies. They have juice. Four fresh and natural flavors that come in a handy box. Sip Super Fruit Punch, Warp Zone Orange, and Secret Code Grape and Power Punch. I want that. Oh, I can't even see it. Anyway, there's the juice. That looks like slices of cheese. I don't really understand what that is. It's grossing me out a little. Let's see. Mario Brothers candy bars. I've never seen those. A great bite for busy superheroes on the run. Choose from nut roll, milk chocolate, peanut butter, mints, and chocolate and almonds. Of course, everyone has seen the cereal. Um, whoa, 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 what did I just do? Shit. I... What did I just do? Oh my god. Uh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Nintendo cereal system, you know, that was one where half is Mario, half Zelda. It says two different flavors, fruity and berry. Because fruity and berry are different. <laughs> are packed in separate pouches in every box. The nuggets are shaped like symbols from the Mario and Zelda games from, from Ratson. Real fruit snacks. Who doesn't love fruit snacks? Chewy, tasty little characters from Super Mario Brothers and The Legend of Zelda made with real fruit. Each box contains six pouches from Thomas J. Lipton. <laughs> oh my god, ice cream sandwiches! Creamy vanilla between golden wafers makes an ice cream sandwich fit for a plumber. They're available singly, but Mario prefers them in packs of six. Good to know. And are those like chocolate coins? It's badass. I want to time travel. They were better than the Ecto Cooler. That's cool. Okay, some guy I don't know. It's a celebrity profile. Who's this? Will Willie Ames? He may play a bumbling fall guy as outrageous Buddy Lembeck in the hit television series Charles in Charge. This is something Mike would know about. I don't... I've never seen Charles in Charge. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So he likes Captain Skyhawk. <laughs> that's funny. Pack Watch, a look into the future of NES game packs. <coughs> Worm. Worm is coming. A science fiction adventure. Worm follows members of the Drill Force as they take a journey to the center of a strange planet. 
Their awesome drilling machine, the VZR-5, can tunnel through solid rock and transform into several forms, including a powerful flying fighter. The foreman crew each has different areas of expertise. Okay. Interesting. Has anybody played Worm? I like the name Worm. Worm. Thank you, Joshua, for the host. What else? Isolated Warrior. Some isometric fun. Low G Man. Low G Man. I, I always um, confuse that with Lawnmower Man. <sighs> and I don't know why. Okay, do they have anything else coming up? Castlevania 3! What do they say about that? The excitement starting to build for Castlevania 3. Many of you may have gotten a sneak peek at a prototype version of the game on the Power Walk of the Nintendo World Championships. Castlevania 3's gameplay harkens back to the original Castlevania game, but new, tough enemies block Simon's progress through exquisitely ghoulish surroundings, graveyards, ghost ships, and haunted castles. And why don't you know it, the pesky evil dude Dracula is the ultimate source of Simon's headaches again! Fans of Simon Belmont, get ready! Castlevania 3 should be creeping its way into your local Nintendo retailer sometime this summer. <laughs> Creepy castles! Skeletal warriors! And this is just the first stage! Oh my god! I prefer Castlevania 3 over 4 too. I, Castlevania 3 is one of my favorite uh, Castlevania games. I fucking love that game. Alright, uh oh, from Kembo and Saika, some Bugs Bunny stuff? I don't know. <laughs> what else? Oh, Sammy, what is Sammy releasing? Uh, let's see if you guys can actually see it, that would help. Um. World GP. Okay, so it's like a. Wait, what? <laughs> and Silkworm. Okay, I haven't heard of either of those. Thank you, Redow PDX, for hosting me. Thank you very much. She also streams retro, so check her out if you haven't. Then from Irem, R Type. Let's see. Image Fight, however, Image Fight goes beyond the average battle game with wild arcade style action and colorful graphics. Your ship can collect many optional weapons that almost fill the screen with energy. To add to the challenge, though, the enemies have some heavy weapons of their own. We expect this one to become a favorite of shoot 'em up fans. And it did. <laughs> yes, Trevor was in uh, Castlevania 3. Look at this guy. I don't trust him. Star with the U-Force was a bit difficult to find during the past holiday season, but it is now in much greater su supply. Yeah, be sure to get your hands on a U-Force. <laughs> Thank you, Triumph Shockwave, for subscribing for 13 months. Thank you. Uh-oh, Big Bird's coming to town, so you know Elmo is right around the corner. Um, let's see. Look at this burger. <laughs> what the fuck? What are they gossiping about? This gossip burger. Mediagenic is planning for a busy fall NES season and told us about a few of their future projects. Ooh, inside scoop! First is an outer space racing game using armed hovercraft vehicles with the RC program feel. Another is a space exploration light RPG, which is being programmed by Interplay. It involves the adventures of a Dudley do right type character as he tries to deactivate a planetary communication computer network gone wrong. Also, Mediagenic plans to introduce an advanced flight simulator with cinema scenes to tell the game's story and an NES translation of a Japanese action classic Winchester. Touch my face. You always touch its face. I don't like its eyes. It's creepy. 
got more gossip. Okay, they're talking about Pipe Dream and Hattress. And he has play action football, swords and serpents. Okay, and this is like what is set to come out. <coughs> okay. In May, you're going to get Barai Fighter and Pinbots. June, you're going to get Bad News Baseball and Ninja Gaiden 2. In July, holy shit, look at all this. Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. Nice. Arquista's Ring, Boulder Dash, Captain Skyhawk, Chrysalis, Dragon Spirit, Final Fantasy, Image Fight, Jeopardy, 25th Anniversary, Journey to Silius, Little League Baseball, M Mechanized Attack, Michael and Reddy's World GP, NES Play Action Football, Pictionary, Pinball Quest, Rad Racer 2, Rescue Rangers, Rocket Rangers, so many Rangers. Silkworm, Solstice, Star Tropics, Starship Hector, The Last Starfighter, The Moffat Conspiracy, Gold 13, Tombs and Treasure, Wall Street Kid, Brisbee's favorite, and a uh, Wizardry. Damn, that's a lot to choose from. And in August, you have AD and D Heroes of the Lance. Let me zoom in, sorry. Thank you, 77. Uh, let's see, August, you got Battle Chess, Bigfoot. I don't like Bigfoot, but people stand that game. <laughs> Cabal, Circus Caper, Dungeon Magic, Dusty Diamonds, All-Star Softball, Gilligan's Island, Heavy Shredding, Mad Max, Narc, Nightmare on Elm Street, I love that game, Rally Bike, Schengen the Ruler, Super Off-Road, and then in the future, just sometime in the future, it was a summer to remember, says Rizzi. <laughs> AD&D Pool of Radiance, Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout, Castlevania 3, Deja Vu, Dragon Warrior 2, Hunt for Red October, Isolated Warrior, Low G Man, Maniac Mansion, Mission Impossible, Puss in Boots, I have Puss in Boots, <laughs> Total Recall, Ultim Ultima 2, and Worm. Worm. Oh my god. Alright, damn, so this is a whole thing promoting a Super Mario Bros. 3 strategy guide, which I'm sure they sold a ton of. Um, I first played uh, Mario 3 on the All-Stars version, and I would have been very happy if I knew there was a guide for it when I was a kid. I would have liked that. That's cool. I miss the old, like... Uh, Mario artwork. Everything just looked so much better. Now everything is like, you know, like 3D. This is just cuter. I like it. Back issues available. So what can you get? Issue 90. Super Mario 3. Tetris, 89, Mega Man 2, the covers were all so good. I think we, we went through this one on stream, I believe, uh, pretty recently. Um, I want to, I actually have never read this one, I want to go through this one. That controversial cover, let me fix this, of Simon's Quest. I wish you could still order these, wouldn't that be nice? Then of course, Batman, DuckTales, Turtles, these are all good. These are all like iconic, you know? Ooh. So the next issue, it'll have the Nintendo Power Strategy Guide for Super Mario 3. And they're going to talk about Chrysalis, Star Tropics, Moffat Conspiracy, and Final Fantasy. Cool. What's this? Player's Poll Contest. Win an ultimate fantasy trip to Hollywood. Oh my god, including meet Arnold Schwarzenegger on the set of his next movie. 
a video session on the set so you can experience total recall of your trip. <laughs> An actual Martian police uniform used in filming. Uh, three days and two nights in Hollywood, California. Acclaims action-packed NES game pack based on the movie Total Recall. Nice. Total Recall action. Thank you, Hex. Someone won the contest and they said it sucked. Really? That's funny. I'd like to hear about that. Second prize, win an ultimate collector set of Total Recall patches. Third prize, win the ultimate mind game from Acclaim. Well, that's cool. So, someone actually won the contest, but they couldn't actually meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. That sucks. I'm sorry. Um, that reminds me of when I did some Kellogg's contest, um, back in, like, 98 to try to meet NSYNC. <laughs> or 99. 98, 99. And so, like, there was, we had to save all these, like, boxes of Kellogg's, and it took a lot of work. And then when we get there, and it says, like, meet in sync, and they give you a little, like, um, backstage-looking passing, and, like, me and my mom and my friends were like, oh my god, we're actually gonna meet them. Tony the Tiger walks out, and that's it, and he gives you a sticker. You don't even get a picture, like, they should have taken a Polaroid picture with Tony the Tiger, and I would have been a little more happy. But it was bullshit. It was a lie. <laughs> anyway, guys, so this was the May-June 1990 issue of Nintendo Power. This was a really good issue. It was really fun. Um, I hope you guys had fun reading through it with me. Um, and then I'll probably be back next time with um, some more Simon's Quest. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out. And I'll be back again very soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Do-do-do-do.